So David Eichholz here with David Richard Gallery, and I'm with Laura Watt today, and we're at the gallery and standing in her exhibition for Solo Show with the gallery that's opening um, in just a couple days. Uh, we just installed them last night, and we're talking about the work. Uh, we're standing in front of, uh, there are two series in this show, um, the open ceilings, and we had talked about them in an earlier segment. In this segment, we're gonna talk about the Hyde series. And uh, there were six paintings in the show. And to me, as I was installing the show, I, I see them as, as I mentioned to you this morning, as really sort of two aesthetic groups. These are more like a fishnet or, you know, um, or uh, like a, it looks like a looking down on a, on a cowhide. Um, and you'd mentioned that because they're sort of being tugged uh, to, the per, to the periphery of the canvas, these sort of overlapping webs, or grids, I should say. So this is, looks like it's got four grids uh, making up this one, and they all vary. And these are a little tighter. And then we're going to get to three others that really open up a bit more and sort of start morphing towards what is really your newest body of work. Yes. And so, um, so let's talk about the hides. And there's a kinship uh, in terms of f f the formal aspect of sort of grids and structure to the uh, open ceilings. But there's also the conceptual underpinnings, as we had said uh, in the other uh, segment we talked about, is this conceptual link between these two. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what we're going to touch on now is, um, and probably we'll just start with the, the formal sort of aspect first. And you had told me when we were actually, I guess you did mention it in the studio, but it didn't, didn't really gel with me so much um, until a couple weeks later. And I'd ask you if you would just write some statements and thoughts. Right. You know, when you just had a quiet moment, because when you're in a studio visit, you know, you, we kind of ricochet yeah. off of things and what have you. And, and it's just I always like it when artists can kind of write about their work just themselves and say it in their own words. And um, you had mentioned that you really wanted to look at kind of two things in these. And one was the, um, the gesture mm -hmm. and focus mm -hmm. more on the mark making and, and the gesture. And so these are longer paintings, they're horizontal, and, um, and it gave you more room to start moving you know, physically right. with the process. So, and I, I guess I forgot to ask you, do you, do you paint these on the wall or on an easel? They're, you, they're or on flat? The, on the wall or on the ground. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you almost always stretched you know, rather than stretching oh, okay. them after. Okay. Though the, these, of all of them, could have been done unstretched because whereas other, I, I use the stretched canvas to kind of, um, to start the process painting. Mm -hmm. These, I don't think kind of that specific edge or size would have been as important to these. I chose the size of these because it's a, it's a, size canvas I use both horizontally and vertically often. It's very close to my body size gotcha. and kind of arm range. So that's why I immediately went to that, to this size mm -hmm. for these. But that didn't answer your question, but ask so, me another one. But <laughs> why this complex layering of the same thing? Because that's not typical of, of your work. Uh, um, well, I guess that's not entirely true, but these are, well, some are parallel, some are, you know, well, sort what, of what, What's happening, it, the, it is common to my work and a lot of the other work. What I've done is I'll put a grid down that's, the original grid is usually um, vertically, horizontally oriented. And then the grids that go on top of it are actually just kind of spun um, 90 degrees. So it's literally re, redrawing the grid but spinning it a little bit. To, to, to build up that net um, right. text, texture, so forth. But and what's interesting in these three, the reason why I kind of wanted to call them out separately is um, you, um, they're closer together, the lines are closer together in some of these. And what ends up happening then is the grid down below actually becomes completely filling 
the open space between the most uppermost grid. Yes. And so you're getting a pattern of color, a distinct pattern of color, and it's most pronounced in that because you created a gap. Yeah, yeah. You purposely created yep. a, a gap here with the green, which then sort of gave, me, gave it sort of a different compositional read. But that's what you're sort of pulling through here um, is you see a grid, but moreover, you start seeing patterns emerge because of the undergrids are filling in the negative space or the open spaces of the uppermost grids. Exactly, and, and uh, to me the, the interesting things is that point, like how many times do I have to do this grid where I start to see that new pattern but haven't lost the grid? Because at a certain point, you know, if I were to keep going over and doing this, I mean, there's no, why, why did I stop here? So there's a bit of serendipity in this. It, yes, it's, you know, what the uh, kind of operating um, rules of engagement were, the initial grid, which was really just use your arms. If, you know, I came in this way and this way and here and here, and that's how you start to get the pull, is because basically the original grid is this kind of convex concave system right. but so the initial grid goes on and then I start applying the other um, colored grids and then it's a matter of like how many how many layers till we start to see these new areas like kind of new territory mm -hmm. develop but I don't I, I didn't want to lose um, all of that that distant ground in there and so this, this is, was the earliest of these, and you can oh, really, really... Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is, yeah. Huh, okay. And, 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 it, and it wasn't that long, because obviously I, I'm now remembering I was still kind of enamored well, with the Well, there's the palette the between, color. yeah, because yeah, yeah. the other, for people who may not have seen the other segment, we were talking about, yeah. we were pointing to something over there, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the uh, open ceiling paintings were on the other side of this uh, room. And uh, the reason why we're talking about it is um, because they're largely neutrals. They're gray, black, and just a little bit of red and a little bit of blue. And, and one of the paintings, oddly green. And interestingly, you bring in all of that except for a new entrant here, uh, which is purple, this sort of purple color. Yeah, yeah. And so that's why I put this painting here because the next painting over is, uh, though there's a 15-foot gap here, but. Um, or 12 or whatever it is, and is the, um, right. the open series. So you right. see chromatically the linkage between the two series. That's yeah. why I did that, to yeah. sort of bridge to this. But as you were talking, I, we, I didn't pick up on this um, from our previous conversations, but these are really process paintings. They are, yeah. And that's not <laughs> normally, well, other than just sort of laying down your grid, but then you start infusing all sorts of other things. You start infilling and doing I other things. I get bored, yeah. But, <laughs> but these you stopped. You stopped short of sort of the fussing, except for the one where you add the loops, the return loops. But even still, that's linked to the, it. And that, what, where it's your thing, um, the we're, big orange. Yeah, big to, orange. Yeah, and that was so um, done, like, oh, dramatically. That was, you know, yeah. I'm going to make this, right. you know, um, decorative and lush and very that right. surface orange and it's the only and one color. out of the series but i never thought about that so these really are process so there really is um process paintings that you you gave yourself a constraint and so that's not unlike actually the other paintings you gave yourself a 30 inch by 30 inch square and and basically limited your palette and other things so you set parameters there you, you set parameters here and what's interesting is you your end point was when you you stop you force yourself to not stray like you typically do into then infilling and, and exploring other spaces or altering something like you would have started doing something different here right normally yeah <laughs> but you can you can find yourself which is interesting that's a whole other thing that brings these together that i didn't even think of until you just start talking about your process yeah i just realized that uh, uh, yeah absolutely these were and they um were uh, process paintings uh, they almost all do start that way, but and often then then I'll let the um, imagery take over. Exactly. The, the picture. And here you can find yourself to 
the space, the geometry, and you really didn't have a palette limitation here, but you sort of had a palette uh, limitation Definitely here, there. yeah. So interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, until, and, hmm. and what it with these is what I um, was really trying to get at, um, which I think you start to see in kind of the complexity of the newer paintings and mm -hmm. how they're structured, is what I can find just using the grid, not then um, filling in the kind of um, the spaces Open in between, spaces, yeah, yeah, which I at times will call lozenges or, mm -hmm. you know, that, yeah, but. So now this also now brings a whole nother thought to me um, about the hide part. So hide, um, you know, you, you came up with, that's not what you intended to do, but it was as you, because you do these arts, <coughs> as you just said, and, um, and because you're not overworking these, which I know sounds when people look at these and go like, what? <laughs> I know, <laughs> but believe I mean, it, they're and, not. But in terms of like, you know, putting in your, your loss and shapes and other things, I mean, there's a, there's a lot going on in them. But, but when you step back and read them, I think is how you were composing these and, and your decision when you stop. You know, um, you, you like the way the, the, these pattern on patterns and merge something that in and of itself was a complete Mm -hmm. picture uh -huh. without uh -huh. any other fussing and but what you notice though is because you start with these like these arcs that's why it looks like an animal hide because on the outermost edges it looks like the yeah, lines yeah, are being tugged yeah. by the perimeter as, yeah and as the grid and, keeps <clears throat> getting um yeah. drawn over and over it shrinks right. in just like a hide shrinking it's but the other point i think now that i'm realizing is um, and I realized it too when I was reading what you had written. I looked back at my notes from our studio visit and, and just started looking at the paintings myself. I think um, the, the hiding as, a, as an obfuscation or camouflage, it becomes much more of um, a pertinent point to, to not only this series, but ties it more to that series. And part of it is, is um, that other series, you said was sort of a grieving process and also you would just move to a whole new environment. And so I think what we end up doing a lot of times is we decide how much we're gonna share or mm -hmm. let people in, you know, how much we yep, give yep. out or how much we let them in. Yeah. And so that's sort of where the camouflaging or sort of like these are now setting up boundaries. There's, you, there's perforations you can go through just like your open ceilings where you look out, yes. they can look in. Yes. Um, so it's not a complete shielding, but, um, and that's why I think just these as grids without becoming a picture per se, like your more, your other paintings. Right. Um, or from other series, I should say. It really is sort of setting up sort of that grid of, or permeability of what you're going to let out and what you're going to let in. Is mm -hmm. that yeah. over interpreting it too much? No, no, not at all. I think, um, I think that's a really a, a, a astute read. And I, it's one of the things that I think brought me to geometry and more specifically patterning mm -hmm. is kind of, um, as I wrote to you, the, the codification that you can get. You can get this pattern really, um, uh, collapses and condenses narrative and narrative systems. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, you know, throughout different cultures, how patterns are used, um, which I, you know, I, when writing about my work, I've used different examples, you know, Irish sweaters and those patterns. I've often mentioned mm -hmm. Navajo pots and the weather. You know, um, yes. the image. So any of those, you know, you've got this huge complex narrative, you know, telling things like the family story on an Irish sweater, who this person is. And that is so intriguing to me and appealing because it's both so much, so much information is giving over and not necessarily any, if you don't know the code and you don't know the right. language, you know, so you can have your cake and eat it too, kind of. Right. You can both uh, well, explain, a, show, yeah. and also, ha you know, hide, hide certain things and they're it's kind of fun to you know to see what people can can ferret out well and part of it is um it's the geometry has an inherent um aesthetic that people just like mm -hmm. and especially when combined with color or other things but what you're getting at is um code and uh and those who are in the know immediately look at that and go oh you're 
so-and-so, or you're this, or you're that, because they know the code and, and they're reading it, mm. versus just a design, correct? It, yeah, that, yes, yeah, so I guess, it, I, yeah. That's and there's a, a lot of things like that in culture, right? Yeah. I mean, the handkerchiefs and yes. pockets and what color and what pocket. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know, know. There's all that, sorts of things that, are, that most people who aren't in the know don't know, yeah, but yeah. the people who are on the know are kind of like, hmm. <laughs> now that's a, that's a really great, um, great way of describing it because it is, I think there's a lot to that. And I think I get a lot of joy out of that too, be, you know, because it's either a throwaway, you know, or just one little process, right. or it's kind of can be the key, or right. it teaches you how to actually read the rest well, of it. Well, it's sort of like your way of putting of your a signage out that, you know, this is who I am, this is what I'm about. I'm, I'm open to this discussion, or I'm open to, you know, yeah. meeting you. And it's because they, they read it and they're like, oh, okay, you know, and so it's, it's, it's sort of like, um, it is. It's like a sign. It's an it's a it's an invitation to engagement. If you understand the code, <laughs> right, right. But right, I mean, and that, that, so when you think about it, that's not uncommon in yeah. all cultures and things. I mean, yeah. there's always you know cultural symbols and, and yeah. symbolism. I mean, I would ho I would hope the one thing I think that I, I do believe in patterning in general is, is that even if you don't know the code, you can get in and get something out of it. Exactly. I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's, it's just the aesthetic yeah. aspects and, and what yeah. have you. Um, but you know, you, what you're saying is you get sort of an, a deeper meaning. So this, we didn't even talk about this part. Yeah. We just talked about sort of the camouflage, like this is sort of like a, an obfuscation. But this is really kind of beyond just uh, you know, sort of shielding yourself. Well, actually, when, when you only have a code that other people know, it is a shielding. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, so yeah, no, there's a whole other layer of depth here. Yeah, no, and I also <laughs> That's why I, I like these open discussions, yeah. because it, and when they're on the wall, and you don't have the distractions of the rest of your studio or the things, then that's what's nice about these. Is yeah. It really allows you just to focus on, on these and sort of parse out, you know, what all's happening. So there's, mm -hmm. you know, as we've talked about, you know, since you've been here today, there's a lot more complexity and things going on in your work just beyond just the, the visual aesthetic or what's just right, presented, right. you know, on the wall. You know, so that's what I think is really great. I mean, it shows too, that there's so much more content with geometry than just, you know, um, than just the, the geometry. <laughs> you know, there are ways of imbuing content into it. And it's... And well, we, they're, it's, they're the building blocks. I mean, any content should be able to be imbued there. Be, you know, as you were using the honeycomb, it might... Mm -hmm. it's, though that's, that's what we've got. So... You know, I feel like in a way, um, relying on that kind of grid, honeycomb, these um, building structures, basic geom geometric structures that you find both naturally and man-made, you've, you've already got uh, something for people to understand and rest on, that mm -hmm. sense of kind of built things, and then you take it kind of from there. But... Uh, the other thing, because um, I, I went somewhere there that didn't finish my thought very well, but I like when you said the camouflage too mm -hmm. with the shielding because it is that, you know, maybe I'm hiding, maybe I'm not sure how much I want to disclose, but also maybe I really can be a number of things, which camouflage, you know, yeah. allows you to do. The other thing, seeing them out of the studio, I also love, as we were talking, realizing that what's exciting to me is that they just, I left them at the point where you're starting to see kind of if we really look at them like a hide, mm -hmm. a stretched hide, you know, and you see that, that shape of it, it's just becoming shape. It's not, it's not solid yet, you know, the one right. behind you, you still can feel the ground and you still can feel it moving but it's really new shape has come around it and it's you know just out of a, a mark making process right so that like to leaving these where they were and not saying oh okay i'm gonna go in here and and really delve into this and bring out this sort of area but just kind of where these first like found enclosures or mm -hmm. um to me uh What's so important is it shows how much generation, generative um, quality a grid can have and, and that uh, interaction of color. 
Like there's just a, you know, these are very quiet if we go back to the open ceilings and kind of besides the optical kind of shimmer, they stay, you know, mm -hmm. in their place. And these much more. Well, these are more dynamic. I think, yeah. Because first of all, as you said, you, you wanted to focus on the stroke and the, or the mark and the gesture. And what's happened here is you've made them canvas filling. And the only way, but yet pictures emerge out of them. And so, um, and that's by your process then. Yeah. And by palette. And so it was this, this constant shifting of these, you know, around and the, what gets filled in color wise and the uppermost grids. And that's what starts to create sort of a, a, defines what is the final composition, which I think is how you also ended up titling some of them, because I can't remember which one is which, but one of these is the yard. One's the yard and one's front garden. And, yeah, and I, I can't, I can never remember. I think that's front garden. I think so too, because of the, the and what kind I wasn't of border. sure of is if, it, if you did that because the, uh, the color palette is suggestive of the garden because of this, these you know, sort of uh, coral and yellow colors. Um, because it does, it sort of looks like somebody's yard, like yeah, with the yeah. fence perimeter or you know, here's the garden yeah. and then here's sort of a walkway and then here's the perimeter, you know, where you have shrubbery yeah, or yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> I know you giggled when I used that word, <laughs> but, um, but it, this does, it these does, two though. do look like yeah. aerial views of, of a landscape. Yeah. And, they, um, and the titles came, um, yeah, because it looked like that, and that's how it started to feel. Yeah. You know, as, I, as I'm finishing these and you're kind of working more and more tight, it feels like you're making, your, you know, a yard or a garden. I mean, it really, it felt like that. It's like, so okay. So you're taking now, we, we talked about this somewhere else, maybe in this conversation over there, but you're now taking sort of, you're reading your own work based on your own um, history of colors and uh, shapes and, and maybe how you or your mom or your grandmother laid out your garden or whatever, I, and you're I, reading it that way, where somebody else would look at it and go like, well, I don't see a garden, <laughs> you know? But, uh, but again, that's sort of the interesting thing again, and that's with geometry, even just something as simple as geometry, we all have a different read on it when you start now putting it in an outer context or with the color that's, that's, that are used and everyone reads it differently. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of interesting, but it's sort of interesting how, how you're sort of leading with the titles on some of these. It's a, <laughs> a, a, a hint, you know, if this is the way you want to get in there, yeah. I think what drew me about the, to, to me to these when I first saw them was they are just sort of like, sort of like, whoa, you know, but there's also, I mean, there's a lot of content here. There's a lot of imagery, but at the same time, they're clean. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's, it's just lines yeah. and it's just, but it shows you how um, elegant now, I didn't even think about the process side of it, but when I was writing about them, I realized, oh, this one is sort of a skew to that. And this one's like perpendicular. And this one's like, you know, perp you know, it, it is, um, you know, just is parallel, uh, but shifted. And, and I realized that, but now I, I'm glad I asked you about the process because yeah. that, that is now how this is all happening. Yeah. There is yeah, a serendipity and process to it. Yeah, um, I kind of think of it, you know, the um, Eames film Power of Ten? You've seen it, I'm sure. I Probably, forget what yeah. they, they did it for, I think IBM, but they basically, oh, it's yes, all. Yes, yes, yes. Back, but yeah. that's kind of the way I think when I'm doing these grids is, you know, you're kind of coming in, landing. Yeah. And then and I really, there's a lot of landscape in my painting. So that's kind of this way of, you know, getting closer and closer into landing. Yeah, there's, and, oh, there's a lot of organic in nature in your, your work, even though it's not a picture of anything per se. You know, I mm -hmm. still see a lot of feathers in your work. <laughs> you know, like quail or peacock or something. <laughs> and so, and it's, because it's you, you use this yeah, shape, yeah. which is common in nature, which yeah. is this, this bisecting things. Yes. And so, and it's just the left side, the right side, yeah. you know. And so uh, I see that a lot. And then you repeat it, which inherently then looks like feathers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And again, it's just my reading of, you know, uh, looking at animals and their feathers right, and what right. have you. So I think that's what's really interesting about these, but yet it's all pretty much derived out of geometry, yeah. which I think is kind of fascinating. I know that's, I mean, it intrigues me too, is kind of these, the, the multiplicity of illusions that come. Yeah. And actually what you're really, you're, you're looking at a, yeah, um, 
you know, three they, layers of color. keep everything abstract, which yeah. is what I like. And it's... Um, yeah, and the one other thing I wanted to say about these two is because um, there's, there was work uh, b between these two series, mm -hmm. but I know, I'm remembering back after these, um, which tends to happen, the work got very, very um, detail-oriented, very color-on-color, -color, densely, mm -hmm. densely patterned. So then I really also wanted to do a, um, paintings that, you know, I really felt my whole arm again. I felt like I was starting uh, to lose yes, that. Yes. And that's a that. whole He's range. It's like having a whole range of your voice, law, right. you know. So this was just to see if I had any chops, too, <laughs> left, uh, you know. I knew I could wield a small brush, but could I drag my arm? <laughs> Did I have <laughs> cross, you know, could I make it? <laughs> so muscle memory is still there. <laughs> um, but you know, that, that does, you know, kind of speak to how they, um, what they are at the end, that, you know, I, it's, it's that gesture. Yeah. And, and kind of then how you kind of take a gesture and now it becomes this hide that I can, you know, wear on my back or throw over here or... Yeah. No, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Now, this has been like an epiphany just like... <laughs> <laughs> It's just like uh, I, had, I dropped uh, a little acid in your coffee <laughs> on the way. In. But it's just no. I think it's I have sort of a whole different yeah. thought about how uh, you know thinking about these and approach because I hadn't thought about the process part. So I like that yeah, and good. Um, and it sort of does now make this. Yeah. It takes it away from the animal hide part is is like protection and and what have you like we were talking about with the ceiling paintings there's something that's a boundary a barrier yeah um but yet it's it's normally considered like a ceiling or a you know or a hide is sort of warmth protection right you know and um but i think um once again though just looking at your uh the formal aspects in your your process literally process here takes these in a different realm because you've brought in other things happening um, in, in art making and art historically right. that you're bringing in that um, is very different than how we were initially thinking about them from more of the conceptual underpinnings. So I think that's, it's, it's, it's interesting. It makes them, I think, much yeah. more dynamic. Yeah. And now I think it sheds a lot more light on your your process in other your previous work and going forward yeah and, and I think the the other thing with that with the process and the importance to me of it is is it um it it keeps me from over defining the painting before they're done you know yeah. I, I I I I I make I want to be engaged in the process the whole painting mm -hmm. way not to sound too romantic about it but that is kind of why I um you know, needed to go back and do that and remember, you know, process right. and, and a kind of a gestural, gestural abstraction, remember that as well as more hard edged decorative pattern work. Gotcha. I want, you know, I want it all, don't we all, you know? <laughs> I want it all. Well, I mean, it used to be every, like every trick in the book <laughs> I'd put into every painting. So at least yeah. I've learned to, you know, yeah. pace myself a bit. <laughs> Hold something back. <laughs> yeah, so the next three, yes, uh, is that's a great segue now into the next three that we're going to shift to. Um, so we'll be going to the third segment in this discussion series, and we're going to look at those because they are similar but different than these. And so I think uh, that'll yeah. I'm really and glad I think this the, yeah, the helped. one th these were very important. I don't think I could have gotten well. The two are the kind of the last two of these that really. Um, just make a, a bigger, more, I think, a more kind of dramatic mm -hmm. statement of what these were. But these were really important in terms of looking at the later two paintings you have. Mm -hmm. I think in terms of the, um, just uh, how I, uh, um, the composition that I'm able to right. get. The, the more complex paintings, composition yeah. is actually based on understanding this pretty simple yeah. frontal, frontal gridding. Yeah, and that's what the on the curation of this show, I really wanted to keep it tight uh, with just these two series because of the discrete geometry, yeah. which struck me as very different than a lot of your other work, other than the ones that were sort of more derived from the quilts, which are very, very structured yeah. inherently. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but uh, you had some segues of, of other things in between, and that's why when I saw these two, I thought, well, these are, the, well, the one series, the open ceilings are really discreet, and, uh, but I, I saw the relationship between all your work immediately, yeah. but that's why I thought this would be a really great way for us to start working together, grounding in sort of these really formal aspects, and now we've added two more things, which <laughs> is the optical yeah, art it, sort it, of it, concepts and influence in illusory space, but also now this, this process. kind of process, which is, and I think yeah. that's, I, what's so exciting is I think that is so important yeah. to, to really kind of see what I'm trying to, to put together. Because the one is very deliberate. So the optical and illusory, there's certain rules, not rules, but there's certain things that will make that happen. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. not everything works. Whereas here, when you're now dealing with process, you're opening yourself up to more serendipity yep. in yep. terms of what happens. And you're sort of saying, okay, I'm just going to trust this process to a picture will emerge and I'll know this is done when I feel like I'm seeing a picture or the picture I had sort of had in mind. Yeah, yeah, you know? when, it, when it's, yeah, when I'm starting to make decisions that are different from the initial decisions. Exactly, because yeah. you're initial now you're, engagement. You're moving it to a resolution. Exa yeah, you yeah. Know, uh, because something's coming out that you want to sort of really play up, like your decision to sort of create that break. Yes, um, but, or, yeah, and yeah. or the way back here kind of coming in and, you know, that fuss, what seems like that thin red line, yes. but that really, like, like, that was the thing that really, you know, got that alive. Yeah, and it, exactly, because yeah. what it does is it really amps up that contrast yep. with that yellow and yeah. that green. Well, yeah. the yellow and the green want to work together yeah. and bring in that red on top of that blue, you know, um, definitely made it yeah. really define that blue so it just didn't get lost yeah. as a lavender blue. Exactly, exa and I mean, this is actually is a nice example because mm -hmm. it's it speaks to, I had it done without the red on top, it was in the studio and it was there, just but didn't, just didn't have yeah. that, you know, oh. that like heartbeat. Yeah. And, and then, so I did that and it kind of was like, okay, that's enough. And I could remember feeling like, oh, should I do it? You know, should we trick it up a little more? <laughs> Get those, you know, one. And I'm like, no, that's, you, right. you, you gave it what it needed. You're just yeah. going to be, you know, polishing the lily or gilding the lily. Yeah. Um, no, very powerful. And I love gilding the lily, but not always. Um, <laughs> well, it's like... I've always, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You know, it's, it's kind of so important I'm to see... I'm sort of a maximal minimalist, minimalist <laughs> yeah. too. But that's, you know, yeah, it's important to see those, to kind yeah. of see, yeah, that's what's going in the larger yeah. paintings that aren't necessar don't necessarily come in kind of a discrete series. Well, it was the only thing you could really do without making this, turning it into one of your other series, to stay with this constraint of a long moving gesture, uh, canvas filling gestures, and my only variation is the palette and how much I turn it. Mm -hmm. That's it, you mm -hmm. know, so you can find yourself. Yeah. And so, um, anyway, no, it worked out yeah. perfect. It, it, Cause yeah. I agree. I don't think this would have been as strong and we wouldn't have been spending as much time in front of it if that red hadn't been there. Yeah. Cause otherwise that lavender blue yeah. would just, have just doesn't, sort of yeah, away. yeah. And it's because all the other things were kind of similar value. There were too many other things mm -hmm. that were similar value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why. Yeah. And so that helped actually uh, make this, turn this into a shade against all these lighter values yeah. by just bringing yeah. in that fine red line. And it, it's, it, that is, was it. And it's funny because in all of them, I was always trying to kind of hold not having the linear work of the grid pop too much off the yeah. ground. Yeah. So it was that balance and it kind of until I got the red, I had muted it all a little bit yeah. too much. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. I'm on to you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh no. <laughs> My secrets. We're done. We're done. We're done. No more secrets. <laughs> we're going to move to the next segment. So we're going to do these guys? Yeah. Okay.